did they lose? A possible lead in the Hudson family murder case, investigators have found a gun that may have been used to kill three members of Jennifer Hudson's family. Good morning, I'm Steve Sanders. And I'm Micah Matera. WGN's Julian Cruz joining us now live from the Hudson family home on the south side with all those details. Hi, Julian. Good morning, Micah. This certainly has the potential to be a major break in this case, a discovery of a gun on the west side of Chicago yesterday, just about a block from where authorities found the body of young Julian King. But Chicago Police Superintendent Jody Weiss says it's going to take some time to determine if the gun is, in fact, the murder weapon. It's a weapon of the same caliber. Um, but what you've got to look at is, is wait till you actually run ballistic tests. There. You have to compare the casings uh, for any type of tool marks that might be on them. You'd have to compare the ballistics of the, of the weapon. Um, and those take time. The gun was found close to 1.30 yesterday afternoon in the tall grass of an alleyway, according to police, in Chicago's Lawndale community, just a block from where Julian King was found shot to death in a Chevy Suburban. But police cautioned that it is not unusual to find handguns stashed away on an empty lot. Gang members like to keep them handy but off their person because if they are arrested with the gun on them, it is a felony. Now, adding to the find is last night's surprise search of the Hudson home, even though family returned days ago. Police came back to the scene of the Englewood rampage, carrying out bags of apparent evidence. Police won't answer questions about what they could have possibly found, given that the Hudson home was thoroughly processed in the days following the tragedy. One other piece of new information, the Chicago Tribune says... Authorities are now calling this man, William Balfour, a suspect in the triple murders, even though News Affairs says they have no knowledge of the status change. Balfour has not been charged with any crime in connection with the murders, but he remains in state custody on a parole violation, reportedly refusing to take a lie detector test on the Hudson case. But Superintendent Weiss and other top police commanders say they're getting new leads. There was also some other small bits of evidence recovered by other probationary police officers assigned to this investigation. Now exactly what those pieces of evidence are, police won't say. Published reports say that detectives believe a second individual may have had some level of involvement in the murders or at least the apparent effort to cover up the crime. Although it has been nearly a week now since this tragedy in Englewood, still no word from the Hudson family. On a funeral service, there were reports of some sort of a public memorial service happening, perhaps this weekend, but once again, no official word. Reporting live in Englewood, Julian Cruz, WGN News.